नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू आवर कंटिन्यूइंग सीरीज ऑन द लाइफ डिवाइन वी आर ऑन द चैप्टर इन बुक टू इन डिटर्मिनेट्स कॉस्मिक डिटर्मिनेशन एंड द इन डिटर्मिनेबल एंड वी आर एट द पेज नंबर थ्री वन सेवन ऑन द पैराग्राफ स्टार्टिंग स्टार्टिंग विद ऑन दैट हाइपोथिस सो सिंस वी आर डूइंग इट वन से वीक we are likely to lose the link of what we read last time so i'll read out to you the summary of what he has said in the previous para then we will start reading the para that we have to read today okay so yeah so he has said in the previous para he is discussing what could create this in the physical world we see two things we see that there is first of all a law and an order okay every species produces itself in a very very orderly and uh, regulated manner a dog will produce only a dog a cat will produce only a cat it's never that a cat produces a dog there's no chaos so you see a certain order and a law but at the same time you see that there is an element of chance he calls it chance it may produce a cat may produce two kittens or three kittens but they are not all the same there is a variation so therefore there are two things so he says what could explain this one so he says let's start with some hypothesis let us suppose that there is a consciousness and there is a force so that is the hypothesis that he is uh, basing himself on and then he will examine the thing and see whether it is valid or not okay and he will raise objections himself to it so in this one he is saying in the previous para an explanation can there be that there is an extra cosmic conscious mind that is creating this universe not seeing the creator is not a problem you don't see the creator as one would see the painting but not the painter okay if you go into a um an exhibition hall you will see the paintings you see the world but you don't see the painter you don't see the author so that's not a problem he says or even if the creator were in the cosmos not outside he could hide himself behind his creations much like the director of a film these are all my ideas to make you explain the so a director of the film has done the whole film but you don't see him you see only the he is hiding behind his creations he is not outside the universe okay so first hypothesis extra cosmic god has created the world and if that's a problem to you then we could even suppose that god is there in the world creating but hiding himself okay he could hide himself behind several veils the first of which could be matter the material which hides the creator yet is plastic enough to be molded into any shape okay matter can be molded into any shape it can become a tree it can become a, um, a flower a fruit and an animal even and even human beings matter is being molded into that the second veil could be life and the third could be mind but now the question arises but why create at all for the joy of creation then why if that is the reason that he is creating for joy because all creation normally you see in the physical world gives joy but if that is the fact then why the pain and the suffering he is creating okay then joy is understandable but why is there so much pain and suffering in the world this problem is insoluble if the creator is personal and extra cosmic this much he has said in the previous para okay you cannot solve the problem of pain and suffering in the world if you think that the creator is standing outside the universe and he is personal only if he is a person why is he creating pain and suffering for the creatures that he has created so this much he has said in the previous para now we can read the para that we are supposed to read today on that hypothesis okay he is examining the hypothesis so what is the hypothesis the hypothesis that consciousness has created the world and after hiding itself is working like an artisan shaping the dumb but responsive substance of matter that's what he is doing 
there is the hypothesis that he is examining okay so <clears throat> so on that hypothesis there must be behind the action of the material energy a secret involved consciousness cosmic infinite building up through the action of that frontal energy its means of an evolutionary manifestation a creation out of itself in the boundless finite of the material universe the apparent inconscience of the mat material energy would be an indispensable condition for the structure of the material world substance in which this consciousness intends to involve itself so that it may grow by evolution out of its apparent opposite all this is the hypothesis that he is examining okay for without some such device a complete involution would be impossible first of all he involves himself in what he has created and then he is slowly evolving out of it if there is such a creation by the infinite out of itself it must be the manifestation in a material disguise of truths or powers of its own being the forms or vehicles of these truths or powers would be the basic general or fundamental determinates we see in nature we'll come back to the uh, sentences later on the particular determinates which otherwise are unaccountable variations that have emerged from the vague general stuff in which they originate would be the appropriate forms or vehicles of the possibilities that the truths or powers residing in these fundamentals bore within them the principle of free variation of possibilities natural to an infinite consciousness would be the explanation explanation of the aspect of inconscient chance of which we are aware in the workings of nature inconscient only in appearance and so appearing because of the complete involution in matter because the veil with which the secret consciousness has disguised its presence the principle of truths real powers of the infinite imperatively fulfilling themselves would be the explanation of the opposite aspect of a mechanical necessity which we see in nature mechanical in appearance only and so appearing because of the same veil of inconscience it would then be perfectly intelligible why the inconscient does its works with a constant principle of mathematical architecture of design of effective arrangement of numbers of adaptation of means to ends of inexhaustible device and invention one might almost say a constant experimental skill and an automatism of purpose the appearance of consciousness out of an apparent inconscience would also be no longer inexplicable so he has examined the whole idea of the hypothesis that a consciousness which is extra cosmic or you can also think that it is in the cosmos is creating the world with its force so we can go back to the or we can do one thing briefly see what the para is saying and then we'll go back into each sentence we then theorize so the hypothesis remember so we then theorize that a consciousness and will has created the universe but has hidden itself in it and intends to evolve out of its apparent opposite there is a theory that he is proposing now we will see whether it's any objections can be raised and then he will examine the objections also okay so we then theorize that a consciousness and will will is the aspect of force and consciousness is aspect of knowledge okay have created the universe but has hidden itself in it and intends to in evolve out of its apparent opposite what is the apparent opposite the inconscience okay so the inconscience below and the consciousness above would be understandable so a consciousness and a will at the highest level 
creating the universe and involving itself in what it has done okay so there it is ending in the inconscience and out of the inconscience he has hidden himself and he is slowly evolving this is the theory that he is going to examine okay and he says that it does explain the consciousness explains the how the nature is there as though it is there behind guiding everything you can see that uh he has discussed this in many places there is will and there is the consciousness force is creating mechanically the order in the physical world law is fixed physics tells you that there are fixed laws in the physical world so that's the aspect of the uh, force the force is mechanical and just creating but consciousness is there guiding and the uh, and the um, element of chance the element of variation is coming because of consciousness so the flexibility is coming from the consciousness and the rigidity of the laws is coming from the force that's what he has said okay so and both can be explained and is also saying that the law that comes it is working with mathematical architecture okay and effective arrangement of numbers of adaptation of means to ends of inexhaustible device and invention so we'll see all this one by one we'll give examples so that it becomes clear we go back to the beginning of the para on that hypothesis so what is the hypothesis we repeat again the hypothesis that consciousness has created the world and after hiding itself in what it has created is working like an artisan shaping the dumb but responsive substance of matter matter is very very unconscious but still it will obey what the creator is asking it to do like clay clay is also very dumb but the potter can make anything out of it he can make pots he can make um, cups saucers plates he can do whatever he wants so that's what he is saying okay so so on that hypothesis there must be behind the action of the material energy a secret involved consciousness which is cosmic obviously because the what has been produced is a cosmos infinite building up through the action of that frontal energy we see the energy in the physical world its means of an evolutionary manifestation so it is creating its it is uh, using the frontal force to make an evolutionary manifestation a creation out of itself in the boundless finite of the material universe the boundless finite he is describing the material universe as boundless finite is rather interesting because you can't think of uh, a finite the moment you think of a finite for the world you wonder what is there beyond it so it's a challenge to the mind so it is actually a boundless but it is limited the universe cannot be absolutely the physical if it is physical it has to be bound boundless finite of the material universe the apparent inconscience of the material energy would be an indispensable condition for the structure of the material world substance in which this consciousness intends to involve itself so that it may grow by evolution out of its apparent opposite <laughs> he is not talking here of the leela but the divine creates a material which is capable of hiding him and if it is capable of hiding him he is full consciousness therefore the material which will hide him has to be the opposite it has to be the inconscience so that's why see you have to start with the idea of inconscience okay because he has to hide himself in it and why is he hiding himself in it because he is evolving slowly out of it okay out of his apparent opposite for without some such device a complete involution would be impossible exactly how can it involve itself in something which is already conscious then it won't hide itself but when it is hiding itself you have to have complete in conscious the hiding must be real <laughs> if there is such a creation by the infinite out of itself it must be the manifestation in a material disguise of truths or powers of its own being 
what is created is part of itself that's what he's saying just like an artist makes a painting but the painting is only an expression of what is inside him okay or a poet makes a poem and the poem is already latent in him he is only bringing it out okay that's what he's saying so whatever he is producing in the universe the universe is a manifestation of his own being whatever is the possibilities in him he is manifesting them so if there is such a creation by the infinite out of itself it must be a manifestation in a material disguise of truths or powers of its own being the forms or vehicles of these truths or powers would be the basic general or fundamental determinants we see in nature now now what is this fundamental determinants in nature so the fundamental determinants of nature in nature are the substance that he is producing because that is the starting point for making everything so the fundamental the determinants of nature are different okay but the fundamental effect, uh, determination in determinants are ether air fire water earth or if you want to uh, use vedic language it is the seven planes of consciousness these are the fundamentals they are fundamental determinants but that determinant will produce other determinants that's what the fundamental so ether fire air water that is a five but those are seven so how do we account uh, so that is the way you divide the uh, thing it depends entirely it's a question of dividing how you want to divide from the in from the super conscious to the inconscious there is a gradation of light from the highest to the lowest and it's a continuous um continuous existence and a continuous extension there are no limits so you can divide as you want it's a question of um, how you want to divide you can divide it to three as many philosophers do gross world subtle world causal world you can divide into five like most philosophical systems do either air fire water earth but shrimdo says i will follow the vedic pattern and the vedic pattern is seven and what are those seven in the vedic pattern sat chit ananda super mind mind life body this is his way of saying okay but mother says you can divide into 12 you can divide into as you in fact shrimdo himself says that you can divide into infinite number because every time you rise one level the laws and the characteristics of that plane change it says there is no limit to it so now he is talking of the um the fundamental determinants in nature the, you can also think of it in another way the fundamental determinants of nature are, for instance uh, he has given himself an example earlier so take oxygen and hydrogen okay it's a determinant you can say that oxygen has got these properties hydrogen has got these properties but when they combine they create another determinant which is even more that's water okay a particular determinant is water ice and water vapor if you want okay so we may call oxygen and hydrogen general determinants i i'll come to that uh, the a summary later on we'll see that later on so okay so fundamental determinants we see in nature the particular determinants okay uh, we have to so fundamental determinants as i said at a physical level if you take okay you take the all the elements they are pure gold silver oxygen hydrogen they are all very very clear characteristics they have so they are the fundamental determinants what are the particular determinants whatever they again produce the gold is the fundamental determinant and it produces gold rings earrings necklace um armlets bracelets all these things it can produce they are the particular determinants which otherwise are unaccountable variations that have emerged from the vague general stuff in which they originate would be the appropriate forms or vehicles of the possibilities that the truths or powers residing in these fundamentals bore within them so what he is saying is gold can mold itself into 
an armlet, a bracelet, an anklet, a nose ring, and an earring, and a necklace. So it has got the capacity to do that. Okay. So that's why it's called the fundamental determinate, and the particular determinates are the forms that we see in the physical world, which otherwise are unaccountable variations that have emerged from the vague general stuff of which they originate. Would be the appropriate forms or vehicles of the possibilities that the truths or powers residing in these fundamentals bore within them. The principle of free variation, free variation, I told you, a cat will produce three kittens, but each one would be different. Okay, they'll have different colors, different sizes, different even nature. The principle of free variation of possibilities, natural to an infinite consciousness, would be the explanation explanation of the aspect of inconscient chance. Okay, chance of which we are aware in the workings of nature. You see that there is a lot of variation. In the plant world, in the animal world, you see these variations. Okay, there is a law, and the law is that a cat will produce only a cat, but the cat is producing different types of cats. So that's a variation, free variation. There is both. There is a, uh, a fixity and law, and there is also a chance. So the principle of free variation of possibility natural to an infinite consciousness would be the explanation of the aspect of inconscient chance of which we are aware in the workings of nature. Inconscient only in appearance and so appearing because of the complete involution in matter because of the veil with which the secret consciousness has disguised its presence. It seems to be inconscient but actually it is not inconscient there is a consciousness hiding in it. Now we come to the next sentence. We'll uh, give examples of that so that we understand what he's saying. Okay, so the principle of truths, real powers of the infinite, imperatively fulfilling themselves, would be the explanation of the opposite aspect of a mechanical necessity which we see in nature. Okay, what he's saying here is the principle of truths, real powers of the infinite, imperatively fulfilling themselves would be the explanation of an opposite aspect of a mechanical necessity in which we see in nature. There is a fixity and a law that operates. Okay. Again, I come back to the idea of the cat producing only a cat. This necessarily, it has to produce only a cat. It can't produce anything else. So this is the mechanical necessity which we see in nature. Mechanical in appearance only and so appearing because of the same veil of inconscience. Okay. It would then be perfectly intelligible why the inconscient does its works with a constant principle of mathematical architecture, of design, of effective management, arrangement of numbers, of adaptation of means to ends, of inexhaustible device and invention. One might almost say a constant experimental skill and an automatism of purpose. So, when we examine the nature, we see that all these principles are there, okay? First of all, mathematical architecture, okay? Can we give some examples of that? For instance, the um, this sequence of uh, numbers. Yeah. Nah? Uh, mathematical architecture, like there is this number 108 and if we like Google Earth, Moon, Sun and just simply 108, then I don't exactly remember, but the distance between the earth and the sun is 108 times the diameter of the earth. And yeah. same is for moon, something like that. So but mathematical yeah, structure. there are three or four like this, 408. I'll give you two examples of mathematical structures, okay? Let's see the, um, the geometric progression of numbers, okay? One, two, two multiplied by two becomes four. 4 multiplied by 4 becomes 8. 8 multiplied by 8, this is a geometric progression. To the, uh, to the square, 4 square, 8 square. So, where do you find this? You find this in the cell reproducing itself. 
it goes by leaps and bounds it goes on one produces two now each one again produces two more so it goes to four and again these produce two more so it goes to so geometric progression very clearly you can see there then there is the normal procedure of one two three four five six okay that also you can see very very slowly things are moving now there is another one the fibonacci um, Uh, series where the if you take a shell a sea shell and the spiral there that is the principle it follows and what is that 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 3 plus 5 is equal to 8 so this is the series that it follows so that's what the sir is saying he is not giving examples but very clearly mathematical architecture of design of effective arrangement of numbers of adaptation of means to ends now that's interesting we'll give examples of adaptation of means to ends okay so take the trees okay they need water and they need air okay so if there is too much water there'll be problems if there is no water there'll be problems but nature adjusts itself adapting itself means so you can find even where there is no water in the deserts you find cactuses so nature has adapted herself to lack of water and if there is too much water she adapts herself into mangroves <laughs> okay so this is what he is saying adaptation of means to ends we also see that certain animals when they have to eat certain type of things they produce the necessary instrumentations to look at uh the birds okay they have to catch prey and so they need the right instruments so they get a beak and the what is the beak it is nothing but lips which have become hardened and sharp and our nails become for the bird claws claws <laughs> okay and a horse has to run fast so what is it become the nails become hooves <laughs> so this is the adaptation of means to ends that's what he's talking about nature is going on adjusting oh these conditions are there okay i'll produce the right thing to deal with the conditions okay i'll give you other examples also so a tree needs water so the roots that go down they start seeking water there is the tip of the root becomes hydrophilic it wants water so it goes into i give a very interesting example which is there surprising in the press we had a, a water, underground water tank and it was concrete and the tree that was there very near it sent out its roots and it pierced the concrete wall and covered the whole with fine roots structures so there seems to be a consciousness there in it it knows that there is water there and it's going there that's what is meaning okay so even for the fibonacci series So the galaxy plan of Auroville. Ah. That galaxy plan follows the same Fibonacci sequence. This is a spiral. That's yeah, why it's it a spiral. spiral. Yes. The spiral is that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So it's interesting what he's saying. Okay. Then also you can think of the uh, effective arrangement of also take uh, ins- instinctive animals. The instinctive animals is nature is adjusting herself to the necessities of the environment. how does a bird know that it has to fly 5000 miles down south from the cold winter that is coming instinct so adapting of means to ends okay so that's what he's saying okay another thing a bear has to go and live in the north pole so what is it it develops a tremendous layer of thick um under the skin there is 4 5 inches of fat which isolates it from that then also it becomes white there are bears with black uh, which attract uh, light and uh, heat and white it rejects heat so uh, this is the adaptation that we are talking about okay so inexhaustible device and invention inexhaustible device and invention you can think of the leaves of trees okay from the tiniest of leaves to the vast huge leaves the banana plant okay that's a leaf <laughs> and you see other leaves also small 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 tiny tiny leaves and then the shapes and the sizes 
it is surprising when you see the uh, amount of variation that can be there so <coughs> this is what he is saying mechanical uh, necessity acha so perfectly intelligent by the inconstant as it works with the constant principle of mathematical architecture of design uh, of effective management of numbers of adaptation of means to ends also you can also think of the earth na the earth has got three movements one is it is going round the sun that's the first movement the second movement it is revolving on itself okay so you get day and night and why is day and night necessary because you need to rest energy is not infinite so at night there is rest and day time there is activity then it has to produce seasons so what it does it rotates on its own axis there is a third movement so you can see how the consciousness that is there has thought of every possibility and provides for that in the physical world so you can see a consciousness hiding behind the forms and guiding it that's why he says apparently inconscient but not really inconscient it is hiding and governing everything to put it in other words vishnu says that the transcendent creates the cosmos and also the individual and he has got three processes of creation the first process you plan the creation okay then you execute the creation and then you govern it so you plan the creation then you create it and then you govern it so tra- transcendent cosmic and individual so in each individual the divine is there guiding it governing it so that's why there is so much of order and um and uh, logic in whatever is being produced okay so the adaptation of means to ends of inexhaustible device and invention okay one might almost say a constant experimental skill and an automatism of purpose the appearance of consciousness out of an apparent inconscience would also be no longer inexplicable because in the inconscious consciousness is there therefore it is very understandable why it happens how it happens so you can think of the infinite variation also you can take it's very interesting we don't think about it but what are the means of locomotion for instance okay man walks on two legs okay an animal moves on locomotion moves on four the centipede has 100 legs <laughs> interesting now the snake has no legs at all so what does it do these legs become muscles and they go in and with contraction and expansion the snake moves okay then go into the air motion with wings so nature gives wings to birds too for motion what about fish it has got flexibility in the whole body and its tail is actually the uh, means of locomotion so even here you can see how nature is adapting itself to so many different types whatever is to be done it manages to do it okay so this is the what sam they saying here so much of variation so much of uh, experimental skill sam they using the word experimental skill na so even the if you see that they were watching a, a video um, of seals they don't have legs they don't have anything but the whole body moves like that and they can go quite fast <laughs> okay so it's nature adapts herself to the different circumstances so the appearance of consciousness out of an apparent inconscience would be no longer inexplicable so we have read the whole para now he is explaining now the hypothesis that is started with seems to explain everything that you see in nature okay then is there something with the theory that can be objected to that's what he is going to exp- uh, examine now okay so let's see what he is saying all the unexplained processes of nature would find their meaning and their place if this hypothesis proved to be tenable so i have started with the hypothesis and if it is tenable if it can be understood then so many things that you see in nature 
the chance element and the order and law and fixity of nature that is there both would be explained if my hypothesis is right energy seems to create substance but in reality as existence is inherent in consciousness force so also substance would be inherent in energy the energy a manifestation of the force substance a manifestation of the secret existence we'll come back to it but as it is a spiritual substance it would not be apprehended by the material sense until it is given by energy the forms of matter seizable by that sense one begins to understand also how arrangement of design quantity and number can be a base for the manifestation of quality and property for design quantity and number are powers of existence substance quality and property are powers of the consciousness and its force that reside in the existence they can then be made manifest and operative by rhythm and process of substance the growth of the tree out of the seed would be accounted for like all other similar phenomena by the indwelling presence of what we have called the real idea infinite self perception of the significant form the living body of its power of existence that has to emerge from its own self compression in energy substance would be carried internally in the form of the seed carried in the occult consciousness involved in that form and would naturally evolve out of it there would be no difficulty either in understanding on this principle how infinitesimals of a material character like the gene and the chromosome can carry in them psychological elements to be transmitted to a physical form that has to emerge from the human seed it would be at bottom on the same principle in the objectivity of matter as that which we find in our subjective experience for we see that the subconscious physical carries in it a mental psychological content impressions of past events habits fixed mental and vital formations fixed forms of character and sends them up by an occult process to the waking consciousness thus originating or influencing many activities of our nature also very very interesting and we have to look carefully into what he is saying but there is an involvement of also he is continuing the <coughs> to examine the theory that he is making actually he is talking because he has to convince those who are are not familiar with the spiritual experiences but when you get spiritual experience you know that the physical world is being made by sat chit shakti ananda so he is talking in a logical manner but he is his theory that he is doing is actually can be experienced in spiritual uh, planes of consciousness so so i'll do one thing i'll read out the summary okay then we'll do the uh, next time we can do the explanation of this paragraph next time we can go line by line that's uh. right i think so so i start sat is a substance that lends itself to be shaped and hammered into form color and size such is a substance that lends itself to be shaped hammered into form color and size consciousness force creates forms and shapes note that sat is involved in chit shakti and chit shakti is present in sat they are all one okay matter is consciousness and consciousness is substance now this is something that we have to understand very clearly there are many people who don't understand consciousness so consciousness is not something vague and it is a substance it is itself sarendra speaks all through in his writings of substance the substance must become pure the substance must become conscious okay so so this is what he say and but there is a difference between 
substance of matter and substance of sat the substance of sat is absolutely subtle and therefore it can take any form it wants in one of his volumes he gives the example to explain the apara prakriti and the para prakriti means the higher and lower nature he says it's as if this ocean of material energy is surrounded by another ocean of spiritual energy that's right and basically it is that ocean of spiritual energy which becomes this ocean of material energy gradually that's right again the idea of gradation okay so so note that sat is involved in chit shakti okay and chit shakti is in is present in sat matter is consciousness and consciousness is substance okay so next time we'll go into each sentence also what i found interesting in this one sentence that these words quality and quantity are very ah that's uh-huh. very interesting yes. okay we'll just give examples of that okay so take oxygen what is it actually it is an atom where there is a nucleus and there are electrons moving around it okay and the number of electrons that come are determining the material that it is in oxygen you have how many electrons eight, eight exactly that's what i thought eight in oxygen in hydrogen one only one but it becomes a totally different thing what about uranium you have what 248 perhaps or something like that yes, okay 238 take gold okay it has got a fixed number so number is determining quality this is what he is saying <laughs> it's very also you can also think of light okay the light the vibrational frequency of a particular light if you change that frequency okay the number you change it becomes a red becomes blue blue becomes white white be- not white but because not a color Uh, a violet green yellow it becomes by changing number so how does this happen this is a mystery we really can't explain that so that's what it means by number okay so we'll go into detail next time and we'll see what he is saying and also it's interesting that the the involved in this whole thing is that the infinite contains the finite all the finites and each finite contains also the infinite this is something that we have to understand and that we see in the physical world okay the whole body you go to the cell and in the cell each cell you have chromosomes and the chromosomes are a blueprint of whatever all the things that are there to be determined the color of your skin the color of your eyes your height your uh, the length of your uh, fingers everything is there stored in memory in the chromosomes so this is the infinite this is a, uh, i like to always quote from uh, william blake's lines okay the that the infinite is there in the finite and the finite is there in the infinite in fact even the infinite is mel okay so those lines go like that he says to see a world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour <laughs> so they are all involved in each other the transcendent involves itself in the cosmos the cosmos involves itself in the individual they are all linked together each one is there in the super conscient all the possibilities of the universe are there in the individual all the possibilities of going back to the divine consciousness is there so it's all involved in each other there is a basic unity of the universe which he goes on saying we don't see the uni- unity here we see only multiplicity but as you keep rising in consciousness the unity aspect reveals itself okay one of his aphorisms sri arvindo begins with these four words there is nothing finite <laughs> and then he after semicolon there is something more yes. but it's a categorical statement in itself there is nothing finite there is nothing called, is there is nothing finite exactly exactly okay